हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज सत्य प्रकाश वेलकम टू माय चैनल दिस इज पार्ट 22 टू ऑफ एस पी डॉट नेट वेब ए पी इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ टू कंज्यूम वेब ए पी इन एस पी डॉट नेट ग्रेड व्यू सो बिफोर गोइंग थ्रू दिस पार्ट 22 टू प्लीज विजिट माय पार्ट 21 वन एंड पार्ट सिक्स पार्ट सेवन एंड पार्ट एट ऑफ एस पी डॉट नेट वेब ए पी टूटोरियल सो पार्ट ट्वेंटी टू इज ट्वेंटी वन इज नॉट रिलेवेंट टू दिस वीडियो बट यू कैन गेट ओवरऑल आइडिया अबाउट हाउ टू कंज्यूम एस वी डॉट एंड वेब ए पी आई एंड इन दिस पार्ट ट्वेंटी टू देर इज टू वीडियोज हुई इज वेरी रिलेवेंट टू दिस वन इज पार्ट सेवन दैट इज एस वी डॉट एंड वेब ए पी आई यूजिंग एसको सर्वर एंड एंटी फ्रेम वर्क सेटअप एंड पार्ट एट इज फॉर रिट्राइव डेटा इन एस वी डॉट एंड वेब ए पी आई यूजिंग एसको सर्वर एंड एंटी फ्रेम वर्क so let's begin uh, with my next slide that is in this video we'll discuss that is how to add http client uh, to sp.net project and how to consume web api and display records in grid view so guys here i have opened two instance of uh, visual studio first instance instance is for is my web api project it is already been i, I have discussed in my previous videos it is common to all the videos this is this is the web api project and uh, and the second instance of uh, visual studio is for asp.net asp.net project all right so i have mentioned few uh, steps whatever i have followed during creation of project and all the details first of all step 1 is add the asp.net empty project so here i have added the asp.net empty project this is called call web api using grid view and uh, second uh, step is i i need to add http client from new get package manager so this package is required to consume the web api external in external project so to install that what what is the process just right click on the project and select manage new get packages all right and and it will open one uh, window in this bid in this visual studio all right so here we'll check you can see i have installed that package it is called microsoft.sp.net.webapi.client so this is uh, supports the http client and uh, the namespace is system.net.http and the, as of now the installed version is 5.2.9 so i i already have installed so that it it is the coming with on install button if you not install you just go to browse and uh, check that check with this package microsoft.asp.net.webapi.client after installing this one you can get some dll packages in your references folder right you can see after installing that http client package i have i am getting uh, that reference that is called system.net.http and system.net.http.formatting and uh, that means we have successfully installed http client package in our project all right and after then uh, <coughs> next step is i need to add class for mapping property with web api response right so that means you can see i have created one new folder i named the folder name employee and here i have added one class under this folder name that is employee.cs right and uh, i'll i'll uh, show you the class details so i have mentioned the class name is employee date right <coughs> and this is the namespace inside i have added the class name and this is the all the you know using statements this is called the namespaces and uh, here i have added five properties right so in previous videos regarding web api so we have got the response in web api it is this web api response contains this four fields one is id second is first name third is last name fourth is gender and fifth one is salary so accordingly Uh, based on the web API, web api response we need to clear, create the class and under the class we will define the properties same as web api response so we have i have created the class and under this i have defined the similar properties as per the web api response right so after then 
uh, fourth step is I need to add web web form for grid view design. So very simple. Just right click on it. Right. Okay. There is yeah. Right click on it and click add. Right. <clears throat> if you'll click add, then uh, you'll get one more new uh, pop-up window. So here you should add the new item and there is after putting new item, you will get that various options for web form. So I have uh, uh, renamed the web form to web form one. After then you can see two files will be generated. One is web form one dot SPX and one is web form one dot SPX CS and is SPX dot designer dot CS. So it is not required to define your code. You just we just work in two files that is one is waveform one dot spx and another is waveform dot waveform one dot spx dot cs right first of all i will check about waveform one as per the step uh, step number four <clears throat> so this is the uh, html code for in waveform one dot spx so here i have mentioned the <clears throat> title name is consume web api using sp.net grid view and I have added the CDN bootstrap link for adding the bootstrap CSS to our uh, grid view, right? And here the form tag is started with run our server and the H1 tag I have added consume web API using grid view. And uh, this is the code for a grid view. So ASP grid view and it is the closing tag of ASP grid view. And the ID I have defined for the <coughs> grid view, right? And CSS class is nothing but the bootstrap CSS. I have added this one, run at e equal to server. And I have added auto generated column is property to set as false. And inside the columns, I have two prop properties. One is bound field is for data field and the header text. So data field is similar to the class property names. So I'll tell you about it. Uh, here you can see I have mentioned the ID this ID should be similar to the this property of this class Right similar way. We need to add the header text We can define as per the requirement that's employee ID so that it will be Better understandable to the end user and data field second is first name and the fa header text is first uh, space name data field is last name equal to header text I mentioned last uh, space name and data field is gender header text is gender and data field is salary and header, header text salary so basically based on the data field only it the data field name should be matched to our employee property employee date employee date properties that is id first name last name gender and salary based on that only based on data field property the data will be retrieved and it should be matched with the class properties right and you have seen one header text right it is just for uh, you know a better understandable to the end user so that the user can user can get what it is and what is the column is asking for that's it and after then i have added one s2 tag for the label error label label control i have used it is for if any uh, <coughs> error is coming or any exceptions is found in our code then the this level will get the error uh, error message to the end user and after then i have closed the center tag deep tag form tag body tag and html tag so this is all about web form one dot spx for grid view design right and uh, next one is uh, the, the final step is fifth the step five is code in web form one dot spx dot cs for consume the web api so <clears throat> you can see guys uh, these two namespaces as by default it is it will be used when you create the spx.cs file and um, but this two line of na namespace i have added manually one is using system.net.http so this namespace is required to uh, consume the web api and this uh, namespace is used to access the employee class properties right because this class has namespaces call web api using grid view dot employee so that i have used the namespace as using statement after then we can access this class employee date right so it is simple 
okay this is all about the namespace after then it it is the page load event is there under the page load event i have used the try and cache block that is for exception handling inside try block <coughs> i have used the i i enumerable type of object that is getting from class name employee date so this is the code and set it set it as null so emp object is the object of ie i e numerable right and second is i need to consume web api using http client class so this is the code http client sc new http client <coughs> okay and uh, this one is and second uh, uh, third one is in uri i added the sp.net web api url as string parameter <coughs> so guys i already have discussed in my, in my previous videos this url is for my web api url right localhost colon 49773 slash api so that is i have added in sp.net web api url as a string parameter in for the uri method right <coughs> you can see there is four or the five overloads and one of the met this method is contains the string parameter so inside i have uh, mentioned the web api url next is we need to consume the data <coughs> and get async method takes parameter uh, parameters a string the request uri the request in uri is the api controller name so here i have defined the variable consume api and it con it is the object of http client class get as async is the method inside i have mentioned one employee right so this is nothing but the controller this is the web api controller slash that that is up to api slash controller so i have defined the com controller here right up to api this is content the base address and using get async method i have defined the employee controller name and using the consume api dot wait then we need to read the data so one variable i have defined it read data and consume web api dot result after then we need to check the condition whether data is read or read or not so we need to check the condition that is if the read data that the result we have the, that the read data variable right so if the read data is, is success status code right so it get a value that indicates if the http response was successful so inside if statement we need to add added the i list class and this is the this is the type of elements in i list they are getting data from employee date class is a method right so this is the code that is the display data is the variable read data dot content dot read async method using i list and inside i have mentioned the employee date class so <coughs> this i list class this is the type of element in list so they are getting data from the employee date class so it is a method right after then using that display data dot wait next is before displaying the records in grid view control we need to collect data into this i enumerable object that is emp object or emp obj right so in emp obj equal to display data dot result and uh, next one is finally i will add grid view control and uh, grd emp date is the id of the grid view i have already discussed in webform one dot spx right and uh, okay so this idea of grid view is getting data getting the data source from ie numerable object that is emp obj and then bind the data so the code is grd emp date dot data source equal to emp object this is the i numerable object and the next line of code is grd emp date dot data bind so this is the idea of grid view so uh, so this is the two line of code we need to bind data to the grid view so after then i close the try try block and the in cache block i have passing the exception class ex it is i have added the log the exception information so this is the label error right so label error is nothing but this is the id of the label i have in included in the web form one dot spx that is used for log the exceptions so using that id dot text please check whether a web api is running or not if the web api is not running we, you just uh, uh, try to run your web application then we'll get that error 
if the web app is running then you will get the result which is bind which is bound to the grid view control after then i close the all relevant uh, closing brackets that that is the code all about how to consume web api in uh, sp.net project so i already have discussed about webform1.spx and webform1.spx.cs so once it is done just right click on your solution and build solution and once the build is succeeded you just uh, you just you just run your sp.net project so i need to run my sp.net project now so guys here you can see i getting the exception message that is please check whether web api is running or not and one more thing you have noticed that using that url that is the directly it will be coming with webform one.aspx so that is possible if you have to set it as the start page so how to set start page if there is multiple spx then just right click on your required spx project spx file and set as start page so that when the page will load first time then it will it will uh, map to your set as start page that is webform1.aspx so uh, as per the exceptions that is because the web api application is not running so we need to run our web web api applications so that is my web api project we, i need to run my web api application first so guys here i'll type api and slash employee and let's wait for the response So guys here I have received the I am getting the response that means my web api runs successful I need to refresh my web api page now sorry web form page So guys here I am getting the my employee details right you can see all the records I am getting now So here guys I need to compare the data so first of all I'll check employee ID 1 so first name is Ram 1 last name is Pradhan 1 gender is male salary 34,000 we need to check same thing in web API so here ID 1 is for ID 1 first name is Ram 1 last name is Pradhan 1 gender is male salary 34,000 we'll check the ID 17 that is the first name is 17 1 last name is 17 2 gender is female salary 77000 so we'll check same in web api so id for id 17 so first name is 171 last name is 172 gender is female salary is 77000 so that's about the how to consume web api in sp.net using grid view and uh, i'll go to my presentation here so this is my youtube channel subscribe and share it to get the updated knowledge on dotnet dotnet core c sharp sql server mvc web api and github so that's it for today guys thank you for listening have a great day